<laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to Forever Self Employed Channel Quote IQ, all about pressure washing. In today's video, we're doing a QA. We have a, an announcement on the front end of this as well. So hang out with us. It's going to be great. And Mike's actually saved a secret surprise for the end of this video. So watch until the end if you if you want to be dazzled. How's it going, Mike? It's going good. It's going good. How are you, sir? Oh, man. It's another day in paradise. It's, it's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, my house is quiet. All the kids are back to school. Okay, wait. Pull your mic up to you, Mike, because I don't know. You might be on the wrong one. Can, can you pull the mic up, Mike? Hello? No, Hello? yeah, you're on the wrong one. I'm on the right one. All right, everybody hang out. Technical difficulties. No, okay. It's never, so, it's, yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. A little, a little bit of a I'm, weird start on this one, right? Mike was eating uh, as we got started, and I was trying to catch him in the act, if you know what I'm saying. What is that, a kind bar, Mike? Yeah. Dude, Bright Power Wash. I think we talked to him today, right? Uh, is that the same guy? Yep. Funny thing, this guy's last name is Bright. He named all his companies after his his last. I'm just kidding. His last name is not Bright. Which is so. Which is funny. He actually just texted us too. Okay, wrong. You're still on the wrong mic. But uh, Barry from Little's Pressure Washing. We live. You better believe it. My phone started talking in my pocket. I pulled it out and it was your live stream. I mean, Barry, I think that's a sign uh, from above. You know what I mean? That you're here and, and you need to be here. You know what I mean? I'm actually finishing a roof and house wash in, in my pocket was talking to me and it was Mike. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Barry, I apologize. That had a scary situation for Barry. Awkward and weird. Okay. Your, your mic still is not on mic. <laughs> Come on, yeah, this. We'll figure it out. Uh, funny thing is, we talked to we talked to um, Jason, right? Jason from Bright's uh, Power Wash. He got the how to wash course, and he says he uses it to train all of his employees. He's trained thirty different employees uh, using it, so pretty impressive stuff. Uh, and we will be billing him. So with that, invoice is in the mail. Okay, does that sound better? That's better. You got it now. Okay, good. All right, sweet. Now Mike. Is, now that Mike is done uh, fumbling with his with his microphone, I'm done um, eating. Con I'm done bar. drinking. Okay. I'm done fumbling. <laughs> okay, we, we have a little bit of an announcement. We are going to be doing a, a class, me and Mike, if you guys ever have been interested in, uh, not necessarily in person because it will be virtual, but if you guys want you know, to be on calls with us, ask us questions about your business for us to kind of dig into your business and figure out what isn't working, what is working. If you're somewhere in your business right now where you feel like you've kind of you know hit up against a glass ceiling and you want to break through that and you have goals that are bigger than where you're currently are at, that's what me and Mike are doing. We're putting on a class. It's going to start next Tuesday. So if you're interested, it'll be the first link in the comment section description, but I'll let Mike, you know, tell a little bit about what it is too. Yeah. So I think calling it a class is kind of a disservice. It's an eight week program where we are going to do a deep dive into your businesses, your marketing, your systems, uh, how you're operating. And we are going to dissect. We are going to uh, look to see where improvements can be made, what you can do to, you know, increase revenue in the business, increase, you know, lead flow, all of these things that are, you know, in you know, the most important things in, in running a business. And so essentially that's what it's going to be. We're going to do, you know, one-on-one -on -one live calls and uh, we're going to hold you accountable. We're going to give you guys homework. Uh, this is not free. This is not cheap. This is not for everybody. So if you're somebody that, you know, forgot that you don't have any money, don't bother filling out the form. Um, and, and again, this is, this is for people that are serious about their business, about growing their business, and they want to invest back into themselves. And so that's what this is all about. So if you want to spend some time with me and Mike 101, video calls where we're looking you right into the eyes, where we're dissecting your business, going through the ins and outs and... and Whoa, double Justin. And basically uh, f helping you to find tweak everything so that we can get the most out of your business. If you're hitting that glass ceiling with, with regards to leads, with regards to uh, you're not landing the jobs that you want to land, you're not getting in front of the right people, you feel like uh, maybe you're using lead services and you feel like you're way too reliant on those. You know, All of those things is, is the stuff that we're going to be digging into and helping you get past and basically taking you to where you want to go. Our, our biggest goal is, is we want to help guys like even double their business because we're going to lay everything out with regards to what me and Mike do. Um, so anyway, if you're interested, first link in the comment section description, check it out. It's going to start uh, next Tuesday. So not a lot of time. Mike recently got a whoop. Mike, can you give us a whoop review? Yeah, um, it's super cool. <clears throat> My son got one and 
I was like, Hey, that's super cool. And it, it basically does like monitoring of like all of your vitals and health and sleep and everything else. And so when you're a gentleman of uh, advanced age, like myself, then you need to be more cognizant of all of those key indicators of life. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I got it. But no, it's super cool. Like it connects to your phone and like I look at it in the morning and I'm like, oh, wow. And what's really wild, though, is like I didn't realize this. And, and I will say that I am not affiliated in any way with Whoop. They, it, I bought it and it, you know, whatever. I pay the monthly or, or whatever annual subscription for it. But the um, it's super cool. It, it, but it told me that I am awake usually an hour and a half every night while I'm like in bed. So I, you know, I go to bed probably too late. It says that I should go to bed at like nine 30 and wake up like at seven 30, which is absolutely insane. I get about four and a half to five hours of sleep every day. Um, and that's not optimal, but that's how I operate. Four, did you say four to five hours of sleep a day? Yeah. Like that sounds fucking terrible well, <laughs> are no, you there, have the dogs in the bed or anything are you one of those people there's not enough hours in the day to get everything done that i want to and i wait i look at sleep it's such a freaking waste of time like i hate having to sleep i wish that i didn't have to sleep because then i would have 24 hours to get you know to be proactive and like my wife she loves to sleep she's taking a nap right now um and but to me it's just such a waste Mike, if you didn't have to sleep, you would technically be alive for like 20 or 30 more years longer than everybody else. Imagine what you could get accomplished. That would be amazing. Okay. We're going to answer our first question here. If you guys got pressure washing questions, uh, leave them in the comment section description. I will say this. We do all these Q&As on here whenever we do. Um, I don't know. You can call it a boot camp if you want, whatever it is, where we're diving into your business. Dude, we give it all away. Okay. If you guys have taken the courses, you know how good it, good it is. Uh, you can only imagine what else is behind the curtain, if you will. So first link in the comment section description is regular Walmart bleach mixed 50-50. <coughs> that good for roofs. Well, I don't know what regular Walmart bleach is because I've, you know, I've never bought bleach at Walmart. We've very fortunate that we've always had places here locally that you can buy, you know, the professional grade SH. Um, depending on what you're getting at Walmart, like they have... I, I can't remember what it's called. I, I see it like people talk about it, something essentials, pool essentials. And I think yep. that that's a pretty strong bleach that you can buy in big box stores. <clears throat> I don't know what the percentage is, but that's what you're looking at. You're looking at what the, the bleach, the sodium hypochlorite percentage is in bleach. And that's what determines the strength, right? You can go to, you can go to the Walmart or Kroger or wherever, and you can buy bleach. It's like 3%. And that's what you put in your, your, um, you know, your, washing machine. We buy 10 and a half percent from LNH industrial here in Savannah. And that's super strong. That's ideal. And we cut it 50, 50, and then it is great for roofs. If you're buying a 3% or even a, a 6% at a big box store or Walmart, and then you're cutting it 50, 50, you're going to have like, it's going to be like a 3% mix at best. So I would find a, a local you know, supplier of industrial chemicals and, and start buying it there. And then whatever it's rated for on the bottle, like if the bottle says like, Hey, this is 6%, you really need to knock off some percentages because you don't know how long it's been sitting on the shelf for, you don't know how long it's been packaged for. So, you know, the best, the best case scenario is to really get yourself out of this like beginner phase as quickly as possible. Obviously we all start there, right? Like I started with the pop-up sprayer, just spraying, you know, houses. Like that was the beginning for me. And then we moved to X jet and then, you know, downstreaming and then, you know, proportioners, all that kind of stuff. But uh, the biggest thing is, is, you know, in the beginning, if you got to do your first couple of jobs this way, do them, but focus on putting that money back into the business. Too many of us want to make the money, but we don't want to invest back into the business and you'll never scale that way. You'll just kind of always be like- We were just talking to a guy uh, yesterday or day before, and he was interested in doing the, the training program that we were just talking about. And, you know, seemed like a relatively, you know, smart guy. Uh, he was making decent money from what he, you know, he told us, I don't know how accurate that is after, you know, we talked a little bit deeper and got into it, but you know, he was like, yeah, I'm struggling finding customers. I'm struggling, you know, uh, with re repeat customers. We're, you know, we're, we, he was struggling with everything. Right. And then we told him how much it cost to, to have eight weeks, one-on-one -on -one deep dive 
And he said, uh, yeah, man, uh, that's, that's not, I, I'm not interested. And we were like, is it a pricing or is it a value thing? And he's like, it's a price thing. Like, I, 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 I don't want to pay. And then I start thinking to myself, well, you just told me that you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G wrong in your business and you don't know how to fix it. We do. Yet you're unwilling to, you know, put a dollar in to get twenty dollars back to invest in himself. He yeah, won't. thanks for interrupting me. Well, Mike, that's my favorite thing to do. I get a little bit look, guys. I, like I don't apologize. I was gonna say I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> Sometimes Mike's Mike puts me right to sleep. Okay, with with the monologue. <laughs> Justin gets Justin gets very sad sometimes, and and he'll he actually writes me like handwritten notes and mails them to me, and he's like, Mike, I, you know when we go live or we're just talking, and you sound so intelligent and so smart and so articulate, yet I feel like you're outshining me in every way possible, and I I say I, I read these and I laugh at them, and then I show them to my kids and my wife, and we all laugh at Justin. That's really good. Mike is actually trying to dress up like a GI Joe today, and that's why he's wearing <laughs> green up top. You can't see his pants, but he don't want to show you. It's tucked in. <laughs> They're tucked in. I've got a belt. Hey, I've, I've got my shirt tucked in. I'm wearing a belt and like khaki shorts, and I'm gonna go uh, film a quote IQ um, video running, no running down the road. <laughs> Mike actually has those boots where he tucks in the bottom of his uh, shorts into the boots too. So honestly, um, if I stood up right now, I would get arrested. Well, well, I'm you know we love our servicemen. This is not the one of them, but dude, like Mike's also afraid of guns, and so he's got a holster uh, right now, but it's got a banana in it because he, he doesn't. <laughs> Okay, Mike, don't put guns on. Don't put guns on this live stream. Okay, are you not allowed to? I don't think so. I don't think so because this is a. Uh, it's not safe for work. Okay. Um, self-employed moron is here. Sup, guys. Hope all is well. What's up, man? We appreciate you being with us. Um, okay, but That's back like your to little your... brother. Wait, what? Self-employed moron. You're forever self-employed, and he's self-employed <laughs> moron. That could be my brother. I don't know. Some of you guys have found my brother's channel. He's actually on YouTube. He talks a lot about trash can cleaning, um, if anybody's interested. Um, okay. The channel okay, name okay. is Justin's Little Brother. But to go back to this comment, though, it's an unwillingness to bet on yourself. And I'm not saying that this person's in that in that situation, but guys find themselves there. They 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 start making a little bit of money. I think this guy was doing it as a side hustle, the one that Mike was talking about. He was making you know decent money, but you get to a point where you reach that glass ceiling, and he didn't know what the next best move was. So at that point, it's really like a knowledge thing. It's it's where's my gaps in my knowledge. This is something me and Mike talk about all the time. I always point the finger at myself. Like I never say, okay, why, why are we not doing better? It's what do we not know? What is holding us back from being better? And that's why, um, you know. Yeah. And it's cost us a lot of money. It's worth it though. It's yeah. worth everything. Oh, it is. Um, if you could find somebody that had information that would double your business, I mean, dude, like you'd be an idiot not to pay for it. Right, Mike? Like, well, yeah. And that's what I was saying when you so rudely interrupted me was like, people are afraid to put a dollar in to get 10 back. Right? Like, it doesn't make sense why why you wouldn't, and and I'm not trying to sell anybody on 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 anything, right? It it is what it is, right? The people that are going to be the most successful are the people that are not afraid to put in the hard work to invest. And this shit is not easy, right? And there are there are tons of channels out there that you know they they, they kind of propagate the idea that you know this is easy. You can make you know. $10,000 every day or whatever, door knocking or, or, you know, do whatever. This is not easy. Do not let anybody fool you. And yes, I'm on YouTube. Justin's on YouTube. We make content all the time. And honestly, like, I think we're real in our assessment of what it takes. Like it is not easy. You will not succeed unless you are dedicated and you put in the time, the effort, and, and you gain the knowledge, whether that's through personal experience, you just get out there and do it the hard way, or you know, you shortcut the learning curve. There's lots of ways to do that. You go work for somebody, you shadow somebody, you find somebody that can mentor you. These are all things that are invaluable to uh, not rapid success because I don't, you know, may, there there is every once in a while there is rapid success. And I, I had the I talked to a guy the other day who had rapid success and it was insane. Like my jaw was on the ground, but for most of Let's us. Let's give a teaser to what that was. This guy grew a million dollar wash business and he started in March. Okay. Now, oh, you can't hear me. Wait, what? 
Mike, quit fucking with me. Mike, are you fucking no, with me? No, you're muted. Testing, testing. Dude, stop playing. I'm not even muted. Can anybody hear Justin? I think it's I think it's because you you have your thing muted. It can you guys hear can me? Can anybody hear Justin? I think it's I think it's because testing, testing, test. Are you being serious? Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, this I can hear Justin. Okay, okay, okay. This guy built a million dollar wash business from March until today. What was it? Like four months, Mike, something like that? Yes. Like absolutely incredible. We, were, we can't give the secret away, but we will inside of, uh, you know, the training program. So if you guys are interested, eight weeks, somebody comment, Bright Power, Bright Power Washing commented. So what's the price to rent Mike V's mind for eight weeks? Come on. I mean, that thing's like a seal vault. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to know what's in Mike's mind. It's not good. Let's be honest with ourselves. No, there's a lot of stuff that um, shouldn't come out. <laughs> So anyway, first link in the comment section description. You got if you guys want to check that out. Biggest thing is we've bet on ourselves time and time again. We spent money on advice that wasn't that wasn't the best. You know what I mean? It didn't really move the needle for us, but we still put down the money because it was an investment, right? Sweet. And I appreciate you guys letting me know that you could hear me. Mike likes to mess with me sometimes. So. I no. What happened was it went from speakers to AirPods, and the AirPods are in my pocket. So that was I thought I thought that you had hit mute, right? Peaches says that she's my biggest fan. I appreciate that, Peaches. Um, okay, so let's jump back into it. I think we had a couple other questions. This is a really good question from Billy Bob. Billy Bob says, I have a window cleaning business, and I wanted to know, should I start trash can cleaning as well or focus all of my attention on window cleaning? I am a big fan in diversification of the services that you offer because that gives you more opportunities to sell to more people. Um, it also gives you the chance to cross sell to upsell. And so if you're a window cleaning business and you know, pretty much everybody that has windows also probably has trash bins. So it's, it's, you know, they go hand in hand. I also think that, and not so much with, this is just kind of business in general that you need to focus on the things that make you the most money, the things that you are the most efficient at, that you can do the fastest that make you the most money, right? Those are the things that the main focus should be on. Grow those as much as you can. Then, you know, is probably the time to start looking at other things. Master something, add on something, master that, add on something. But no, uh, I would definitely recommend doing a couple different um, services. I talk about this every single week, right? Guys getting this singular mindedness of focus of like, I'm just starting a pressure washing business. I, you know, I got the blinders on. I can't see any other ways to make money. At the end of the day, when you're starting a service, your main goal, your main objective is to offer value in term and in, in return for money. And so if trash can cleaning offers you another way to offer value to, you know, your window cleaning customers or, you know, whoever else you're servicing, then I would say, you know, I'm all for it. You know, Maybe once you get to the level of like where Mike's at, where you got so much lead flow, you got all this pressure washing lead flow coming in. Like it wouldn't be good I, a good idea for Mike to start adding on like other smaller services, smaller ticket services, unless he got slow. And that's when it's like, okay, singularness, singularness of focus. But, you know, when you're in the beginning stages of your business, I think too many times guys are like, I'm only doing this. I'm only offering this one service. And it's like you're closing yourself off to all these other customers. Yeah. So yeah. anything else you want to add to that, Mike? No, I mean, look at any retail store in the world. Right. They they sell lots of stuff. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Just look to retail stores. Okay, who else we got? Um, we got our buddy Todd Ketchell with us. Invest in yourself. You can't go wrong with these boys. Quote IQ. We really appreciate that. If you guys haven't checked out Quote IQ Cam already, it is on the App Store and Play Store. It's live. It's a tool that lets you uh, capture all the pictures of the job. We have forms on there, pre-inspection, post-inspection, upsell forms, whatever forms you want to create, they're on there. Uh, as well as the best before and after pick taker you guys have ever seen. We'll have a demo of that coming up. We're still making a couple of tweaks to it, but it is live, so you guys can check it out. We just want to make sure all the T's and I's are dotted and crossed before you know we put it out. We actually showed it last week, right, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. So um, who else we got? What is your favorite flavor of deli meat, Mike? I'm a big fan. I only will eat boar's head. Um, everything else tastes terrible after that. And I love Boar's Head uh, turkey, honey roasted turkey. I love their uh, mesquite chicken. It's delicious. And I'm also a big fan recently of the London broiled beef. 
Wow. Dip that, dip that in a little uh, horseradish sauce, and it is delectable. Mike, I had no idea that you had such a diversified palate. Yes, I've got quite a palate. <laughs> the palate on this guy is uh, insane. It's quite impressive. Yeah, okay. Let's keep our palates to ourselves if we can, Mike. Um, Sarah, I, th I think it says Sarah. Mike, what do you think? Sarah, yeah, Sarah. Ortega. Miss Ortega. Miss Ortega is with us. She says, how can I join the program? It's going to be the first link in the comment section and the description. Eight weeks with me and Mike going through your business, dissecting everything, giving you a step-by-step -step game plan, homework, following up with you every single week, looking you in the eyes and saying, did you do what you were supposed to do? So Miss Ortega. Another thing is, is like we found that a lot of guys, like there's so much information on the internet that they're like, you know, I still don't know what to do, right? Just because they're information overload. So if you're somebody that needs a guide, needs a map, needs, you know, some people to hold you accountable, this that's what it's for. Well, it's information overload and it is also a lot of bad information. Right. And then you got to kind of weed through what's good, what's not. And there are a lot of, you know, like there are people out there that are, are promoting various services that they offer. And some of these are not very good. And I've seen time and time again where people are like, man, I, I saw this guy or I watched him on YouTube. I, I bought his $25 course or I hired him to do my, um, you know, my ads. And it was, it was terrible. It was terrible. And, and if so, and, I, and you, odds are it's going to be terrible. That's why. Yeah. So guys always still try to go the cheap route, but that's just a good rule of thumb, right? Mike cheap is terrible. Cheap is terrible. Okay, sweet. We do appreciate having a, a lady in our presence because this is typically a, a man-dominated uh, live stream, so we appreciate you for hanging out. I'm starting a power washing business. Um, have had great results in the job I've done. I'm leaning towards an industrial power washing truck fleet. An, an industrial power washing truck fleets, factories. How can I stand out um, to such industries? Okay, so this guy's wondering how he can get work doing like industrial jobs and things of that nature. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's kind of the same with with all, you know, customers and, and how you acquire any customer. And you need to put in the groundwork first. The foundation has to be set. You need to have a Google business profile. You need to have insurance. You need to be licensed. You need to have, especially with industrial, they're going to they're going to be requirements uh, beyond what, you know, somebody that's just doing residential might be uh, required to have. And, and so with, with that being said, do the, the, the foundation first, which is, you know, building your business, being searchable. So if, a, a, you know, a manager or somebody from, you know, the facilities manager needs something done, they're going to Google it because that's what they do unless they've got some previous contact. And, Hopefully you pop up. Hopefully you take the call. Hopefully you respond. Hopefully you show up, provide an estimate, build the rapport, uh, and and you know get the information extracted that you need in order to provide the estimate that will eventually be accepted. That's how you do it. How do you stand out? Um, you're a professional. You give professional. Um, you know when you talk to them on the phone, you have to command. Uh, your pre you you got to have a command. You know be in command of your presence. Um, you need to be uh, the authority. You need to be the expert and you need to give them the confidence that you are able to provide them with what they are looking for. And if you're, you know, not all, if you don't have the confidence and you don't have, you know, the wherewithal to go in and, and speak intelligently and confidently to these people, you'll never get anywhere. Um, so those, those are some of the biggest things. How do you get in front of them? I don't know. I mean, a do this, you know, but you could, you could go to every industrial supply, you know, w warehouse, um, who, who's own the, the FedExes and the UPSs and, uh, Amazon, the people that have the fleets find out where those are. And we've actually got some crazy good, um, strategies that we only teach in our, in our group that, We'll give you exactly who you need to get to, how to get to them, how to find them. And it's absolutely remarkable. Mike, I didn't listen to a single word that you just said, so I might repeat a couple things. But how do you get industrial work? You go where the industrial people are looking for workers. And that's stuff that we're going to be talking about, obviously, 
and that eight week deal. And then <clears throat> it's not enough to be where they're looking, right? Because they'll typically need at least three quotes. It's how do you stand out amongst those three quotes and how you stand out is like Mike said, like professionalism, obviously presenting yourself in the correct way, but a big one is asking the right questions. And if you don't know what, what questions to ask, you're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Extracting the information that you need in order to right. secure those jobs. I right. mean, I do. I was, I went and did one yesterday. Um, and it was honestly, it's, it's almost like taking candy from a baby and you know, everybody's whining and crying that it's so slow July, August. And yes, it is. This is every single year. You're going to slow down in August and July. It is what it is. Um, but like, we, we're not. And we've got, uh, I, I've not been confirmed and nor do I count my chickens before they hatch. But like, I'm quite sure that I will secure this job. And it's probably depending, she's going to give me some feedback, uh, you know, when she gets a couple other estimates, but probably a $40,000, $35,000 job. Um, I quoted it high and was told that I would get the feedback and I would be told where I needed to be because I know the questions to ask. There was a point in time where we quoted a, a job and we know that we were less than other people quoting and the company that went with that selected the the company they they were like 10 grand higher than us and at the time I didn't understand why until me and Mike started diving into some of the things that he likes to ask and say on site and um it's a complete game changer I actually taught Chris some of those things he ended up landing like a $90,000 deal with UPS, either that or it's six figures. I can't remember. So anyway, if you guys want uh, some of the, some of those tasty treats, you know what I mean? Uh, check out the first link in the comment section description. Um, Billy Bob, what higher ticket services would you recommend besides window cleaning and pressure washing? Roof washing first and foremost. Easy. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much the gamut. I mean, gutter cleaning, but that's not high ticket. Like you want to make sure that you, you know, you're diversified, obviously. That's why we have quote IQ to kind of see yeah. where. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, roof cleaning, obviously, that's super high ticket. Um, and then, like, it doesn't have to necessarily be high ticket, but if it's consistent, if it's route work, dumpster pads, uh, restaurants, stuff like that, those are the ones, uh, you know, you know, Billy Bob, if you're in the window cleaning, that, you know, the route work is is very consistent. So, those are the things that I would look at. The biggest thing is just to be diversified, right? You don't want all your eggs in one basket. I think Mike's told this story a couple of times how he got into hard times uh, with around 09, right? Because your business was so heavy into commercial. Like it's yeah. good to have both residential and commercial. And uh, each one has different upsells. Commercial, we could do line striping. Residential, we can do, you know, windows, gutters, roof, driveway, all the other good stuff. So be diversified and, and offer things and advertise to the things that will obviously make you the most money. Jack... Grimaldi says, Mike, should the other services be complementary to the primary service or could I also could it, or could it be a whole other thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that we've it's a complementary uh, service. It's it's and we call it options, right? It's an basically an options estimate. You're you're giving them a menu, if you will. And you're saying, hey, here's the menu. What would you like? And that's what an options estimate is. That's why we built it into Quote IQ. So you can present your customers with a, a whole host of services that you offer in hopes that they say, oh, I didn't realize you did this, this, or this. And yes, I do need this, this, and this. And if they've already got a price, you know, that's awesome. So you could do standalones or, you know, offer the entire uh, menu, if you will. So I think okay. that answers your question. I'm going to answer this one in a different way. We just did a job. I actually just did a video on it. Um, it was how to make $2,000 a day uh, roof washing. If you guys should check it out, it's the most recent video on my channel. But on that particular job, there was so many things that we could upsell to because this house was like in, in disarray, if you will. Like all the bulbs around the house with regards to like the security lighting were all missing. We could have replaced those. There was like an outlet that was like hanging out of the wall. If, there were, if we were an electrician, we could replace that. There was like a communications wire that was like hanging down. We could replace that. If we did landscaping, this, their landscaping was abysmal. Like they had a shed outside that was so full of shit. It looked like they needed, um, you know, somebody to come in and remove it. So like you can offer, I would say this, if you're new to business, right, and you get on somebody's uh, property and they have all these things wrong with it, offer every single thing in the book that you can, right? It doesn't have to be just specific to washing uh, because you want to make as much money with that customer as possible because, you know, 
you don't know where the, the next one is coming from or, you know, at least in the beginning of your business. So I would say it definitely doesn't have to be complimentary, but yeah. So what do you think, Mike? It's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Pretty good. All right, sweet. Um, mesquite chicken is, is really good. It is. Okay. Tiff's been working on her Italian sandwiches. She's been like mm -hmm. doing some crazy stuff with them and they're, they're really good. It's like a, it's like being a deli uh, over at my house. Okay, dude. Chicken cutlet pounded out super thin, right? right. Balsamic, uh, mozzarella, thick, real like mozzarella, not like bag mozzarella cheese, but like right. thick mozzarella. Um, uh, amazing. But it's got to be like, oh, I'm like, what? Like, what? I said, you haven't made this recently. Your car. No, I don't. I haven't made that recently. God, but it was so good. Well, back when I used to travel a bunch, there was a place in um, Palm Coast, Florida, and it was called Coletti's Italian Deli. And it was the most amazing sandwich ever. And every time I would drive by, I would stop and get uh, one of those sandwiches. Oh, my God. Wow. I love it. I feel like I can taste it right now. Uh, yeah. yeah, but Tiff that goes all out. She like even pulls the the inside of the bread out i don't know she does oh nice stuff. okay so uh bright power wash roof cleaning gutter cleaning dumpster pad cleaning dog walking that's what we say right dog walking shrub trimming uh window cleaning like whatever you can offer like offer it make the money right because it, it costs money to acquire customers it doesn't cost money to upsell them so upsell them everything um so much misinformation on the internet completely agree with that um, so many people posing as if they have really successful businesses and, you know, they might not be that successful. Hey Mike, I hate sleeping too. What things are you doing that allows you to sleep as little as possible? Diet, vitamins, exercise. Let me first say from our lawyer, our, 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 our uh, legal team just texted me. Uh, this is not medical advice. It should not be used as medical advice. I would never take medical advice from Mike, Mike, even though he is a, dietitian. I'm just kidding. Go ahead, I am. Man. I am not a dietitian. No. So I have been on a low carb keto diet for about two and a half years, three years. And I exercise every day. We run, we bike. Um, I, during the summer, I, for whatever reason, I can't motivate myself to get in the gym and like lift, but, and I think it's because all the kids are home. But once school starts, I get back into the gym. So I'll, that, I'll add that to my regular routine. Um, but no, I don't take any vitamins. I take, you know, very, very little uh, in, in the form of medicine other than what is prescribed to me by uh, my doctors on account of dying a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I say sleep as much as possible. That's what I try to do. Like I do oh, I know. no alarm. Like Oh, I know. Yeah, I try to sleep as much as possible. I, I'm a sleeper though. Like if I don't get my sleep, then like I'm practically not useless, but you know, we're leaning that way. So yeah, whatever, Mike fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um do you feel you need any uh do you feel like you need a differentiator to stand out amongst the competition? I kind of feel like it, it we answered this uh, as far as professionalism how you carry yourself the way you speak the confidence that you have presenting yourself as the expert the authority uh so people feel you know like they trust you because they should because you are all of these things right and I also believe that uh building rapport with with customers at least initially is something that's it, it, for me. It's commercial where where I excel in that. Uh, residentially, everything is automated and uh, electronic. Uh, there's no relationship building there, other than the brand that we've built in our area that you know ranks high. Hopefully, is recognized by some just from you know trucks for 20 years in the business with the same logo, the same branding. That's how you differentiate yourself, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I mean. What do you think, Justin? Well, he said, do you need to? And I think you absolutely need to. There's so many people that say like, you know, pressure washing is oversaturated, yada, yada, yada. Well, it's not if you know how to place yourself, right? You yeah. place yourself where the right people are looking. And then when you go out, you separate yourself from the competition, from the things that you say, the questions that you ask, the way that you hold yourself, the way that you present the quote, right? All these things, you know, all these things that we put into quote IQ, you quote fast, 
um, at least on residential, and you make a good impression on commercial, right? So completely agree. You have to divert, you know, you have to be able to diversify yourself from, you know, your competition. Jack, if you have a business, man, let us know what uh, what kind of business you have in the comment section below. We'd love to hear it. Um, or if you're just thinking about it, you know, either way. Um, let's see what else we got. Feel the fear, do it anyway. I like that. That's pretty good. I always find it helpful when I'm feeling the customer to assume wrong and they correct you at the right price and it makes them feel good. I don't know about this advice. I'll be honest with you. I don't even know what it means first and foremost, but Jeff, Hefe, we appreciate you for hanging out with us. Okay. Um, Billy Bob, what do you ask and say? If you want to find out, me and Mike are doing a program together, eight weeks with me and the big guy face to face. If you guys want to check it out, it'll be first link in the comment section description. I don't know if you can access, you think they can access the description on a live mic? I'm pretty sure they can, right? Yeah. Okay. If you can't, just email us uh, support at quoteiq.io and uh, we'll hit you with a link, but the link will be live after this call ends. Bright Power Wash says this July and August, we crush and triple from last year. Just did our marketing ahead of time and planned accordingly. Okay. We talked to Jason today. Super bright guy. He's you could tell that he's really on top of it. There's certain people that have certain characteristics of of what I call killers, right? Like they're they're guys that are going to be successful no matter what. Jason's one of those guys. He actually has three different businesses, and you can't be a killer unless you know you can master one. He's got three of them, right, Mike? Yep. And there's certain guys like that. Like Todd Ketchell is one of those guys. Like one of those guys that will learn anything that he needs to, implement anything that he needs to, become whatever he needs to, soak in all the information that he needs to in order to be successful. And that's Michael why Dill. they're hanging out with a lot. Michael Dill, Chris, Chris the striping guy. Hello from Walmart, T baby. Um, Chris the striping guy, another guy, always soaking it in, a student of the game, right? Um, absolutely. Just did my first roof wash yesterday. Atta boy, Josh. Round of applause um, for Josh. Round of applause for Josh. Um, I install motorized pergolas. pergolas and recently offered to wash them and landed two jobs washing them twice a year. Heck yeah. Awesome, man. It goes to show, right? You're on a customer's property. They have, they have, you know, they have an issue, a problem. You're able to solve that problem in return for money. Right, Mike? Yes. Does this have potential washing pergolas? Um, one of the things that, you know, you gave yourself a competitive advantage for by doing work for this customer. I could tell you, I could tell you wanted to say something really good, but you gave yourself a competitive advantage over your competition. We just talked about competitive advantage by doing good work for this customer already. You already built rapport. They already know you. And so when you offer another service that can help them again, they're going to be really quick to hire you. Right. So that's, that's a benefit. That's why when we say you're on site, you do a good job, you offer everything. So that way you can get the most, but go ahead, Mike. No, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I'm I'm interested to know if David works for a company that installs pergolas and then he's side hustling the cleaning. Um, that's all I was thinking. Okay, beautiful. Um, Jack says that meditation helps. Mike, have you ever done any meditation before? Mm, I don't know if I call it medication. I think I call it passing out. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I had a buddy that uh, he used to call passing out meeting the wizard. Yeah. And, uh, he like made it cool. And and I was like, dude, like one time I was passed out, I was telling him stories. Like, dude, you almost met the wizard. Like, it's all good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, if you, uh, if you own it, then it's all yours. I try not to meet the wizard because whew, it's not, it's not fun. I know what that feels like. Um, anyway. Uh, okay. When knocking doors, how do you overcome? We already have a guy. Oh, I don't knock doors, but I think I've been in sales my entire life. And so, you know, that it, it's not just a door knocking question. That's a, that's a, that's a, a response that you're going to hear uh, in lots of different scenarios. And again, this is where your ability to sell and to convey the value that you offer is the critical component of the result of how this is going to come about. Right. So we've already got a guy. Okay. Sorry. Go to the next house. Right. Is that okay? Well, so, um, when was the last time, you know, your guy was here and were you happy with the results? Let him talk. Um, is your, is he, is he licensed and insured or, you know, like, Oh, well, I, what did, cause I noticed, you know, when was the last time he was here? Cause I noticed this, this, and this, you know, there are little things that you can do, 
But, um, you know, that's just an objection that you're going to hear. It's the same with like, I got to check with my wife. I got to check with my husband. I got to, you know, wait till whatever. There's always going to be objections. And so you, you just got to figure out the best way for you to uh, overcome those objections by conveying the value that your company uh, provides and, and how you differentiate yourself from their guy. Anytime you get an objection, there's two reasons why. Either they don't see the benefit in paying the price or they don't see the the value that you know you have to offer. So we can either lower the price or we can raise the value. And so when they say, you know, we already have another guy, you say, well, is it a, is it a price or a value thing? Because obviously your windows need to be clean and I'm here, right? And they'll say, oh, uh, well, you know, your price is a little bit higher than our other guy. Well, what if I throw in a back patio cleaning? What if I throw in the driveway? What if I, th you know what I mean? Then you can start stacking the value or you can say, okay, well, what if we did 50, $50 off? So it's always value or price, <clears throat> or they're just trying to tell you to get away kindly. And that's why we don't really like door knocking. I really hate door knocking because I don't want somebody to come in and knock on my door and I don't go knock on other people's doors. So, you know, any objection though is either price or value uh, objection. <clears throat> how do you respond and get the job? Yeah. Jack, I own a cured meats and cheese business. Oh, is it wow. like, do you ship? Like I put your website. I love cured meats and cheese. <laughs> nice. And a nice key ante. Um, petting dogs adds value to your company. Yeah. You're building rapport. People like the fact that you're uh, taking the time to, you know, pet their cherished pet. Um, if anybody comes to my house, don't pet Milo because he will bite you. Milo and his dog body. Yep. I visited a commercial site, was upfront about being a solo startup and eager to work with him. After a thorough walkthrough, it looks like I'll land the $14,000 deal. Beautiful, man. Good work, Josh. Awesome. awesome. Josh is Josh is getting after it. And yeah. he's got a really good profile pick. Okay. You want to talk about separating yourself? You know what I mean? You got guys on here like Billy Bob, who we just got a B for, but Josh is like, he looks like a good, a good guy, well put together. You know what I mean? And I bet Billy Bob's a good guy too. I would have gone with double B's on my profile, but maybe <laughs> YouTube doesn't do it. Um, <laughs> or double D's. But Josh way. brings up a, a, an interesting point. Um, I visited a commercial site, was upfront about being a solo startup and eager to work with him. After a thorough walkthrough, it looks like I'll land the $14,000 deal. That worked in his favor this time, but, a lot of times people are going to run far and fast when you say, oh yeah, I've never done anything like this. Or yeah, I just started, you know, like even if you're the most thorough, you know what you're doing, you've, you know, mentally, physically, you can accomplish the task at hand, but just the idea that you haven't done something like this in the past is going to scare away a lot of people because most people that are hiring at places like this, commercial sites, they're not the owner. They're not the boss. They're not the CEO. You know, they are working for somebody else. And if they make a mistake by hiring some jack leg, then it's on them. And so they are very cognizant of who they hire. So I would just be cautious, Josh, uh, in regards to offering too much information. I think that's a great way to go. Oftentimes, the person who says the most in a negotiation usually loses it. So I would stay as little as possible. If you want to really control where the conversation goes, ask questions, right? Yeah. And figure out well, what their needs are. <laughs> and I do something that Justin gets so uncomfortable with. Um, I, it, no, 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 no. And it's the, it's the, complete, this, Mike. It, it's the complete opposite of um, me on lives where I'm just jibber jabbering, right? Uh, but when, when, like, we're in, we're, and we are in constant negotiations with various companies and, and people for various things. And I will ask a question and just, just don't say anything. And it's uncomfortable and it's quiet. And I'm waiting for them to be the first one <laughs> to, to, you know, talk. And yes, I also. Mike also likes to make crass remarks to people that we've just met and just talked to and insult their business partners. I mean, Mike, look, we don't want to get it. I did it once. That made me uncomfortable. That was really that bad. One, that one, I know it made you feel say, very uncomfortable. Let's just say we I see that guy all the time. That guy before. Uh, wait, what? I see that guy all the time. Not the little one, but the, the, the guy that we were on with. 
let's just say that that deal didn't it didn't work out too well. So it was uh, never going to work out, and I knew that. Mike called someone a little guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> a little person. <laughs> and he, he wasn't, but we're not going to get into it here. It's not the time or the place. No, but yes. Anytime that there's space in an interaction, you know, that's, you know, hey, look, I used to, I used to do a lot of used car sales. You know what I mean? I used to do a lot of flipping cars and, you know, in a negotiation, you got to be quiet. You know, sometimes people can't handle that. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Ask questions, be quiet, respond accordingly. Have you guys tried subscription-based services? I think what he's referring to is anytime you can build into your business model a way for you to make recurring revenue, I think that's the way to go. Also, you don't have to. Um, okay, Mike. So, for example, like a subscription service within pressure washing, it's difficult, right? Because the house only needs to be washed once a year. Uh, but go ahead, Mike. So, w one of the things that we've done within Quote IQ is our email uh, automation. And We've taken my email automation, my sequences, if you will, and and you know we provide those to anybody that that downloads Quote IQ and has that level of email automation in their tier, um, and we have that in there. And it's not automated or it's not a subscription per se, but with within the automation, it basically allows us to uh, control the narrative of the, the 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 relationship with that person, and then when the time does come. It's almost like a subscription. It's like, hey, are you ready to jump on the schedule again? It's been about a year. That That's about as close. I mean, we do have customers that are like, hey, put me on the schedule for next year so I don't forget. And we do. We'll just schedule it out a year. But um, no, I mean, subscription is just like route work, right? Dumpster pads, windows, um, you know, receiving areas. Uh, if you get into, you know, servicing um, hoods, those are all subscription-based route work. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I think you might be talking about. And it's a good thing to find, right? Consistent work within your business that you can rely on month over month. Trash bin cleaning. Especially in the times, like in the winter months, right? When things slow down a lot. And that's, you know, that's another little tactic that Mike, Mike likes to utilize is pushing some of that commercial work into the winter and then incentivizing it. Um, and somebody who's really good at that is, um, is our buddy here, um, Todd Ketchow. Learn how to shrink wrap those pergolas and make even more money. I actually did a video with with Todd on how he does shrink wrapping, how he prices it, the steps you need to take, all the different stuff. Great winter service. I'll probably do another video with him um, as well, but yeah. um, Todd's a killer, right? Yeah. So. And and um, Hefe Means Boss just commented that, yeah, that's why I said it because I saw the recurring charge on the app. So yeah, we do have recurring stuff set up and that's primarily for like lawn care guys, pest control guys, people that are, are servicing you know, consistently or route work. But yeah, I mean, you could set a recurring up for every 12 months if you would like, you know, if that's. Very interesting question. If 50 Cent offered window cleaning, what would he charge? Uh, I don't know. I hope it's a joke. <laughs> Hopefully more than 50 Cent. Dude, 50 Cent is a really smart businessman. He actually invested in vitamin water and I think he sold it for like millions and millions of dollars. So shouts out to 50 if you're watching this. And he's also been shot like nine times. I think. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. First to talk after giving a price loses. Completely agree. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to pick on this guy real quick. Aaron, the Aaron show. Okay, Aaron, we appreciate you for hanging out. I need some info on starting my own power washing. First and foremost, this isn't the forum for us to give you everything you need to know. You're going to have to do that research on your own. Obviously, we're answering questions about pressure washing, but... If I would just say you need to go do some more research, you know what I mean? What do you think, Mike? Yeah. I mean, we've, we both create content multiple times a week and have for many years to answer those questions. Right. And if you want a more concise answer to those questions, be sure to check out pwcourse.com where we have all of our courses, right? So you get the how to wash course, which would be a great place to start. If I were you, I would definitely do that. Um, how to stripe, another good place, how to build a soft wash system. We have everything here for you. Everything that you need to know in order to start your business, launch it and, uh, you know, make a ton of money with it. So also we have free, free videos on the internet, a lot of them. So I would say start there. To be successful in this business is simple, but not easy to do. Being persistent, consistent, follow up, asking for reviews, asking for referrals, and keeping a smile on your face. Absolutely, Patrick. There you go. There you go. So uh, that's a good thing for Aaron to see as well, right? Mike, anything you want to add to this comment? No, I think he nailed it. Good job, Patrick. Okay. 
Okay, sweet. Um, let's see if we got anything else. When you get to a house, if you don't need the full length of hose, is it safe to leave the extra hose on the hose reel, or should you pull all the hose off the reel? Well, that's why they make the little pins that go in and secure the hose reel so it doesn't back up. That's why you would take it all off. Like if you were to not secure the hose reel and the vibration and the fluctuation and pressure, uh, that it can it can wreak havoc on, on a hose reel and it becomes a real big mess. So lock it down or pull it all off. Beautiful. Uh, Gaming Fanatic says, do you have any Google Maps guys? Someone who can get me at the top of the area for a search in the map section. We do actually. Yeah. Shoot us an email, support at quotaq.io, and we will hook you up. He said, money, um, where did he say? I'm in the Bronx area. My search guy isn't cutting it. So, yeah, yeah. hit us up. Either that or join the class. We're going to be talking uh, a lot about that, kind of giving you the keys in a way. Um, now, if you want a guy to do it, then we have a guy that can do that as well. So, support at quoteiq.io. Um, reach out to us. Let us know. Um, is it a good idea to approach businesses such as a doctor's office, banks, drive throughs and other commercial buildings that you notice have dirty entrances, sidewalks? Um, how do you ask for the boss? Walk in and say, hey, I noticed that your shit's dirty. Uh, who, who's responsible for the maintenance? And usually it's the office manager. If you're talking about doctor's offices, you know, a bank, it's going to be the manager of the bank. drive throughs it's going to be the manager. Commercial buildings, you know, everybody's got a different um, gatekeeper. And so you got to figure out who the gatekeeper is uh, how to get in front of them and then present them with your offer. But yes, yep. definitely go for it. Boom, um, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Another thing is, I don't know, Mike, I wasn't even listening to anything you were saying, but you got to be careful with the gatekeepers. I know you said something about gatekeepers, dude. I've approached like tons of commercial facilities and it's always like the front desk lady, like, Oh yeah, she's the person's not in today. You guys like go into any place. If there's a front desk lady, I guarantee you whoever you need to talk to to do the work is not in today. And they say, oh, can you can you leave us something? And you're like, yeah, yeah here's my little flyer. And then they're like, oh, thank you so much. And then when you leave, they take that flyer and they crumple it up and throw it in the trash can. So our buddy, my buddy Chris has a really good way of finding um, owners. And that's something that we're going to be talking about in the class. If you guys want to take it, uh, starts on Tuesday. It's like some really high level information on how we find out who the business owner actually is so we get straight to the source right we just go straight um for the top so obviously that probably didn't answer your question is it a good idea yes obviously go in if you could talk to somebody there that you know um you could talk to about a price or something that's a good way to go you just will get hit with that person at the door and they'll be like oh sorry janet does our uh our our stuff and she's not in today she's sick or like whatever the case may be i've heard it too many times um we do annual services, house wash, two gutter cleanings, make it easy for us. We charge in the winter time, November through January for next year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great way to go. It's always good to give, give a discount too, if they're going to go ahead and get on the schedule um, early, right? Um, I'm doing a subscription style package for one large neighborhood near me because they have a red dust problem from, from a local plant. So they get touch up work every month uh, for a monthly plan they choose, nice. man. That sounds terrible to be breathing in. Can you imagine like if you had a red dust issue on your house, Mike, like what yeah. that means for your lungs? You That'd be terrible. I mean? It's a good way to go though. Hey, good recurring business. You know what I mean? I would just wear a respirator when you're over there. Yeah. Mike, Justin, you guys are such a wealth of experience and successful info. Hard to find. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jack. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, it's great for fill in or add on days signed up about 55 homes. Oh, okay. Awesome, man. Yeah. So he's got, he's running a red dust cleaning for about 55 homes in the neighborhood. That's a really good conversion rate. I don't know how big that neighborhood is, but that's incredible. Um, that is incredible. Let's see the, how to wash course is a good start. If you want everything in one place. Absolutely. We try to take away all the guessing, all of the searching on YouTube, people are like, oh, I'll just get all this information on YouTube. Well, will you? Like, it's six hours of on-site training. Like, with well, I consolidated it all in one place, right? Um, for a fraction of the price of what you know it would take you to learn all of this, the time spent. Uh, so, and if you guys missed it um, earlier, I had mentioned that Bright Power Wash actually uses it to train all of his employees. He lets them watch it, and um, they actually have a test that they give to the guys after. Yeah. 
30. He said he's trained 30 employees without a wash. So if it's good enough for uh, for our buddy Bright, then uh, it's good enough for... Yeah, and then Justin said it sounded more like torture that someone would have to listen to six hours of me uh, talking <laughs> can you about... Guys, can you guys imagine six hours of this guy right here? The G.I. Joe man in the flesh, you know what I mean? Okay, hey, you, you're not reading your text at all. That is heavy. Just kidding. Okay, sorry guys. It's hard to read a text in the... Uh, anyway... All right. Uh, thank you. How do you guys keep track of how much a job takes, especially for new employees to see how long it takes them to get the job done? Okay. So like a timer for jobs, right, Mike? Yeah. How do we we've keep track of how long jobs take? I've never done that. Um, like not, okay. uh, we've got GPS and all the trucks. So I know what time they get there and I know what time they leave, but unless it's excessive, I'm not going to be micromanaging. Okay, we're going to wrap here, you guys, because this feels like a really good place to wrap. Obviously, as you can see in Mike's face, he's getting a little perturbed. Um, I'm just kidding. If you guys, I got to pick up my daughter from um, volleyball. If you guys want to spend eight weeks with me and Mike, we're going to go through your business, dig through it, figure out where the holes are, figure out where that glass ceiling is that you're kind of running up against. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're spending money in places that you don't really want to be spending money in, if lead flow is sporadic, you need to check it out. It's going to be the first link in the comment section description. And, um, it's going to be really good for the people that join in. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that, Mike? Um, no, I mean, I'm super excited. If you're interested in getting in on this class, make it happen. There is a link down below. Uh, so, you know, fill out the form. We'll vet it. Make sure that you guys, uh, you know, if you qualify and it makes sense for everybody, we'll give you a call. Excellent. 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 Okay. Mike, word of the day. Before we go, um, uh, I don't know. Red dust. Okay, red dust. If you guys made this part of the video, comment down below. Red dust, and I'll hashtag your real. My name is Justin. This is Forever Soul Employment. Until next time, hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace.